What's up, guys? Welcome to the Upside Up Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Nias, joined today, as always, by my good buddy, Garrett Horn. How's life, man? It's good, but you didn't do the really long intro this time. I didn't. I was like, it didn't go very well I, last time. I was getting used to that and really enjoyed it. Should I go back to yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the Upside Up Podcast. My name is Jeremy. Is that better? It's perfect. Okay. Have you cut off any fingers? I this haven't. Week? You haven't this week? Somebody here has. Oh, dear. We are joined by our very uh, fantastic preacher at our congregation and a good friend, Mr. Stephen Russell. And uh, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well. We are, we're very thankful that you joined us today. And uh, you, listener, we are very thankful that you have joined us today on our show. So today on the podcast, we will be talking about Mr. Stephen's recent incident um, with his finger, those that know him. I'm sure I have heard about that, but uh, if you don't know him, he uh, he cut off a little bit of his finger, so we're going to hear about that and uh, enjoy that story as much as we can, I suppose. <laughs> uh, we'll be uh, we'll have Justin's joke, and it's just as bad as all the other ones, so you can look forward to that, I'm sure. And then uh, Mr. Stevens is going to respond to the story that I uh, told on our first episode. So if you have not heard that story, the second half of this episode will mean nothing to you, so I would suggest pausing it now and uh, go and listen to that, and then come back. So, uh, I'm I'm anxious to hear his response. I, I, we haven't really talked about it besides a text message, so <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to hear this. Uh, and then we got some listener questions, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. So, uh, let's get started if y'all are let's ready. Go. Alrighty. So, uh, Mr. Steven, I believe it was a Friday night. Is that what happened? It was on Friday? Yeah. Friday night, I was at Cracker Barrel with Alyssa we were going out on a date and uh, I looked down at my phone after I parked the car and I got an email with the subject I'm okay bad sign yeah (laughs) no one ever thinks oh okay I can ignore this if you see a subject that says I'm okay so uh, why don't you kind of walk us through the uh, the events of that day well all right I I was uh, I've, I've been doing carpentry for Several years, right. nearly 20 years. In fact, the saw that uh, is the offending saw I have had for about 20 years. <laughs> We're helping some of our members uh, build a play set for their kids. Right. Down to the last two boards. Oh, really? And, I didn't uh, know that. Yes, yes. And so uh, put the board, balanced it up onto a sawhorse. And um, as I was cutting the board long ways, pushing it down the, the board, uh, the, the wood pinched the blade and it kick back and um and so my finger my uh, ring finger on the right hand had come into the path of the saw and just clipped the end of it off uh, about two-thirds of the fingernail gone down to the bone cut part of the bone off did it hurt <laughs> you know immediately <laughs> it you you know you've done something right you don't know how bad right and so um you know i try not to be too graphic here but but i pulled my hand away and and you know Blood was, uh, it was, it had a pretty good trajectory coming out of the finger there. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, you realize, all right, this is, this is not Band-Aid territory. We've moved right. past that. <laughs> turned around and I told Wes, who was there helping me, I said, I, I have cut the end of my finger off. And he said, you did what? And I turned around and he, he saw the <laughs> blood and yeah. squirting. And I Such said, I said, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's gone. And he said, oh, oh, you have. And so then, um. Uh, then Bryce, he, he came out with some um, galls and said, here. And I was like, I don't think that's going to do it. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to need a little bit more uh, here. Uh, I'm going to need some something to wrap over this and put pressure on it and something to uh, you know clean it up a little bit. And so he brought a dish rag and we put pressure on it and so forth. And then I told Wes to you know, clean up the tools and everything and, um, you know, get everything in case it rained out of the, out of the weather. Uh-huh. And I felt pretty calm, you know, I was doing pretty good. I was kind of keeping my head about me. Um, and everybody else was in a little bit of a panic, but you know, I kind of react opposite as they get more panicked. I get like more calm. And so I'm just trying to stay calm. No. Um, now, was that a conscious decision to stay oh yeah. calm? I mean, I, I know in my head, I'm going through, you got to stay calm. You got to just, you know, keep your head on and, um, and don't pass out. You know, I was trying not to pass out. Is that, is that something that you would normally do? If you I have that? passed out before. Okay. Um, uh-huh. you know, when I've broken an arm or, uh-huh. um, I put a, 
I put a frame and nail through three of my fingers one time. And oh. I passed out when that happened. Okay. So, Four hands. Yeah. 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 I mean, carpenters, it happens. Yeah. So. Right, right. Anyway, so um, Bryce, we got in the car and we went down to um, the the um, urgent care down by Chick-fil-A and mm-hmm. walked in and nobody's there at the counter. We um, kind of, you know, we need some help here. <laughs> Bryce leans over and hey, we got a got a problem here. And uh, <laughs> finally, a nurse comes out and and she says, uh, "What happened?" And I said, "Well, I, I cut the end of my finger off." And and she said, "Oh, you're going to need to come back here now." And I was like, "Well, really? I was aware of that. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't seem to understand this. This is an urgent care agency." Yeah. <laughs> So we, we went back there to the back, and uh, the doctor came out, and, and she said, uh, well, let me let me see it. And I took the rag off, and she looked at it, and she said, put the rag back on. <laughs> it's okay. So I put the rag back on. She said, you, you need to go to the emergency room. Now, I, I don't like emergency rooms. I don't like how much they cost. I don't like how busy they are. And I was hoping to take care of this at the urgent right. care. And I said, is there nothing you could do here? And she said, sir, you have exposed bone and you need to go to the emergency room. And I was like, okay. Man. <laughs> so urgent care is not always, you know, for right. urgent situations apparently. But anyway, so we went to the uh, emergency room. And um, when we got over there, um, my wife met me there. Well, let me back up just a minute. Um, there are... It's fun to drive cars fast. We all, we all know that, right? Right, right, yeah. right. Bryce is one of those people who thinks it's fun to drive cars fast. Really? Oh, and I, he really took really? advantage of the situation and the I would emergency never, yeah. of I would the never situation. I that. And, uh, and so, you know, in an emergency, you can go fast. We, I, I thought that was going to be the greater injury of the day. <laughs> but let me just tell you, he's, he is an incredible driver. And we wove in and out of 72 traffic at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, at great speed. Wow. Uh, we did stop at a couple of traffic lights. They l- lasted about half an hour as we sat there with right. me in pain. Right. But we did make it to the, the hospital. <laughs> and uh, my wife met us there. And so um, I had blood, you know, all over my pants and shirt and everything. So as I approached the hospital, a guy came out and saw the situation and gave, got me in a wheelchair and right. wheeled me into the hospital. So we're sitting there and the nurse, she starts asking the typical questions, you know, what's your name, you know, what's your address and all this. On a I scale said, of one to 10, how yeah, bad she, is your pain? That She did not get to that question quickly enough. <laughs> when she did, I was like 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do something. Yeah. So she said, well, let me get you back here and let me just check and see what's going on. And I'm like, you know, just whatever we got to do, let's get something to deal with this pain. So they yeah. get me into a room got a doctor or, or a physician's assistant, I think, and a nurse. So we're sitting there, and he said, and so he starts asking me more questions. And I said, I'm only allergic to aspirin and ibuprofen. Please get me something going on here, because um, it, it felt like not only this hand, this finger had been cut, but that the fingers beside it, that the fingernails had been ripped off. I mean, that's the, mm. about the nature of the pain so you're really you're you're allergic to aspirin and ibuprofen or yeah. was it wow. wow make my eyes swell shut that, that's inconvenient i'm sure you would have taken that at that time though wouldn't i you? would have i'd have taken anything yeah. but anyway <laughs> so um so he says all right so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot some uh we're going to deaden it but the only way we can do that is to shoot um the uh local anesthetic into your knuckle right all right Oof. which is so they he gets a needle out oh i don't like needles and he and he holds my hand like this and he says, now be still. And as he says this, his hands are trembling. And I'm like, I'm, I'm being still. <laughs> I, I'm not the one moving here. And so with a shaky hand, he brings the needle to my knuckle. And he, he jabs it in right here uh, on the palm side of the knuckle. And then he starts to squeeze it in. And it looks like this must be thick liquid in there because he's really having to push right. on the plunger to get it in. And he has to move. Yeah the needle around ah, like this from side to side and he says I've, I've got to hit all the nerves and I'm like you're hitting them buddy you are, you are definitely getting all of the nerves and truly that hurt that hurt worse than the cut in the finger bet, wow. but after that bliss I cannot feel my finger anymore right. and I didn't care anymore I mean I, obviously it was local anesthetic but it just made the pain go away so that was wonderful 
So then uh, the doctor came in who looked just like Ben Carson, so I immediately trusted him. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he told me, um, you know, we were going to get this taken care of, you know, just wait a few more minutes and everything. So we waited and we waited. And then he came back and, and uh, so we need to get some x-rays, see how far it's gone. So we got x-rays and he showed them to me and you could see right where the bone was cut. Oh, really? Yikes. Wow. Yeah. And, um, and so he said, all right. Because the bone is cut, which means it's exposed, you know, the end of your bone is sticking out there, right. that um, th- it requires orthopedic surgery. Mm-hmm. So then he says, you're going to have to go to Huntsville Hospital when I have an orthopedic surgeon. I was at Madison. So you got to go to Huntsville, and and, um, and it probably won't be able to get the surgeon there till in the morning. So right. got to spend the Same night in the hospital. So I did hear through the grapevine about a little bit of the story behind the x-ray. Yeah, where they had to take that off. So you could... oh yeah, what happened? So so they, he takes me in there, and at this point, I still got the dish rag on my finger, which I, I'm thinking, you know, I'm in a hospital. I would I would think you would dress this wound. <laughs> yeah, but but they didn't. So they walked me back there, and he's like, uh, "All right, you're going to need to take that rag off to to get this X-ray." Uh-huh. Well, of course, my finger's dead by now. I mean, right. to pain, it, right. I don't feel anything, but it's still bleeding every time I take it off. I mean, it's still bleeding, right? So he says, um, I'll need you to take that off. And so, so he puts a towel down there on the x-ray thing and, and says, all right, take it off and then lay it like this. So I took it off. I mean, it's gnarly looking, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Could you and see so, the bone? I mean, you oh, can yeah. see it. Yeah, wow. you can see it. So um, so you you lay it down there and then blood's just, I mean, it's just pooling out <laughs> there. But anyway, they, they take the x-rays and, um, and they get me back into the room. Well, anyway, that's when I wrote the email. To the, I was mm. like, well, at this point, obviously, if I'm spending the night in the hospital, this is Friday. I'm supposed to preach Sunday. I'm probably going to be on painkillers. That's probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Might have been funny. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it could have been entertaining, but not edifying. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> so um, so I decided to go ahead and write the email. And I thought, I mean, I, I was feeling pretty humorous at that point. And I thought about doing it like the, I don't know if you ever heard that Brian Regan skit. Oh, yeah. Where he comes in and he goes... So, you know, you remember, and he says his brother's name, um, you remember how his arm used to bend like this? Right. Well, well, now it bends like this. Uh-huh. Ooh, you know, uh-huh. so I was going to say, you remember how all my fingers used to be the same length? Yeah. Well, so, <laughs> so now one of them's not. Yeah. But anyway, I thought maybe some people think that a little a morbid. So, yeah. Yeah. so I just decided to start with I'm okay. Yeah. You know, which is what you do when you're telling your mom that something's gone terribly wrong. Right. I'm okay. Everybody's fine. Yeah. Everyone's alive. However. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Um, so, um, so then we go over to the hospital and, um, they, um, they got me into a room and then, um, I went in to take a shower and it started bleeding again, like everywhere. I mean, just, oh, it, they, they, they eventually dressed the wound when I was over at Madison, mm-hmm. but it, I don't know, it released something, I guess the warm water and everything. And right. so they, they dressed it like, I mean, my whole hand is like wrapped up to, to this much now and she's just like put more and more galls on there she didn't like undo what they did she just wrapped it up more see Bryce had the right idea with galls yeah that's just right that's right that's <laughs> right just lots and lots of galls <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, stick with Bryce so anyway that that went that went alright and then like I said I still can't feel my finger and then um, and then about halfway through the night um, I did start to feel my finger mm. and um, so I called the nurse in there and I said um this is this is it's coming back. The feeling's coming back. And she says, "All right, we'll get you something. You know, some painkiller." And they'd already put a IV right. uh, port in, so I didn't know what she was going to bring. Which morphine is apparently the go-to <laughs> drug. And um, as one who does not partake in any illicit drugs, <laughs> I don't think it takes much for me. So um, at that point. It was it was hard. It was weird. I don't know if you've ever had morphine, but I, I told Amy, I said, "You're going to have to put your hand on my shoulder because every time I close my eyes, I think I'm on a roller coaster." Wow, you know, you're just oh, cool. floating. I'm not right. really cool. Not really. <laughs> not awesome. But uh, but I didn't care about my finger anymore. Right, right. Um, so anyway, so I had to do that a couple of times during the night. So the next morning, they took me down um, and uh, had the surgery. And so what they actually did, they actually. Um, in order to um, close up the wound as much as possible, they have to get the bone away from the surface. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Because you can't, if you just close it up, then the bone's going to be right there and, you know, right. you need skin or you need, you know, 
flesh between your right. bone and the surface. So they had to get a tool that drills the bone down into your finger. Mm-hmm. And then they put a stitch in that just kind of held the wound together, but it's still open, still just an open wound, and held that together and just wait for skin to grow back over, which is still doing three weeks later. Mm. Um, should be another month or so before it's um, where I can walk around without this bandage on. Right. So um, so that's that's what got it to that point. It hurt for about another week. Had to stay on painkillers for two or three more days, four, mm-hmm. more, four more days, and then, uh, and then able to taper off that so well i spoke to you um sunday night the first time you came back to church and uh i don't there wasn't a whole lot of uh side effects that i could tell but you did talk a lot slower yeah i don't know yeah, you i remember you were real mellow yeah, yeah. <laughs> laid back yeah. so i i, I said that i would oxycodone shake your hand. yeah yeah i wouldn't shake your hand but you, you talked to me about the podcast actually yeah. and it, you talked sl- much slower, and it, it made me chuckle a little bit, and I, I laughed about it with Alyssa. I was like, he is so drugged. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, so one of the questions... And actually, I was less drugged because that morning... I wanted to come to church that day, right. and I couldn't Sunday morning. I mean, it was just, right. wasn't happening. But about uh, 11 o'clock, I stopped taking my pain pills mm. so that I'd be lucid oh. enough to come right. that night. So that's... That's as loose as I got, you know, that night. And then I, I actually paid for that because I, I went too long between my pain pills and it, it hurt really bad that night. But, mm. So, yeah. so do you still have that saw? Are you gonna I do. Keep using it? Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I, the blade is no good. Um, it actually the blade was bent because I dropped the board and. Oh. So. Uh, well, a question I have is: I've worked with you before doing carpentry type work using saws and stuff, and I've worked with your brother a lot and. Something he said to me multiple times is, he I'd be watching him about to make a cut, and he would say, now, don't ever do this. And then he would make the cut. <laughs> right. So, one of my questions instantly when I hear about you cutting your finger off with a saw, were you doing something you were supposed to be doing with the saw? No. I, oh, I didn't, I didn't think see, so. this is new. No, so what you really, um, you know, with a, with a skill saw, the best thing to do is have both hands you know, one hand on the trigger and one hand on the front of the right. saw. So it's really impossible at that point to cut yourself. Right. Um, I mean, there may be some freak ways you could, but uh, I was holding, obviously, the piece of wood with one hand and the saw with the other and also balancing it on a saw horse instead of just, instead of stabilizing the wood and then using both hands. So, okay. yeah, no, don't do what I did. When you were talking about how, how what kind of a cut it was, was it one of those cuts that you're supposed to make with a table saw where you're cutting long ways or were you cutting across? No, it would it would be well, I mean no most carpenters would not make this cut with a table saw because it's it's on a um, deck board, oh, you know, okay. a five quarter board. Okay. And so most most carpenters would use a skill saw for this. However, Wes when he went back he did take his table saw just to avoid the Gotcha. The very okay. possibility. Well yeah, that that's one of the things that uh, your brother would do a lot was a cut that was supposed to be done with the table saw. Right. And he's like, well, this is the saw that's on my hand right now, so here yeah, we go. Yeah, sure. Uh, but anyway, so that's that was instantly the first question that I had. Yeah. You were supposed yeah. to be doing what you did. So uh, today, though, I did go to get the stitch taken out. How, how was that? All right. So I go in to the doctor, and... Um, and he, he tells me, he said, well, we were going to get the stitch out, but, um, you know, it's it's kind of grown over where the knot is, the scabs. Okay. And mm-hmm. so it's underneath the scab. And he said, I'm, I'm not going to rip that scab off. I mean, that would hurt a lot. And so just wait, and eventually that will come off. And, the, mm-hmm. and, and so we're going to clip the stitch, which went from this side of my finger to this side of my finger, through right. through my finger, and then over. Yeah. And so the knot okay. was up here. Okay. So we're just going to clip it here, and eventually it'll come out. So the nurse, she comes in, she clips it, and she said, well, let's just see if it'll come out. And she yanks on it. Oh. Ooh. Well, it didn't come out. <laughs> but it hurt. It really? Yeah. <laughs> she goes, well, that's really in there. And I said, it, it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You're right. <laughs> Please don't there. do that again. <laughs> and she said, I guess we'll just leave it there. And I was like, I think that's what he said. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the one that got eight, 12 yeah. years of yeah. uh, education. Right. So... Eventually, actually, when I got home and uh, soaked it um, a little bit, I did I did get the stitch out, and that is just an amazing sensation to feel thread going, you know, through your flesh. 
Ooh. Mm. So I've never had stitches. No. Good or bad? Stitches. Not not awesome. <laughs> <laughs> not the best feeling you've ever no. had. Well, well, I'm glad that you're doing okay. You seem to be making yep. it all right. So, yep. uh, how much how much was cut off? I've seen pictures, but how mu- how much would you say was cut so, off? So. Um, you know, initially, uh, you know, if you take about two thirds of your fingernail away, it was cut and it was flat. Okay. But when they sewed it together, you know, the the flesh, the meat mm-hmm. of your fin- of my finger kind of puffs up, and so it's going to grow back probably to you know maybe there. Okay. You know, maybe maybe a midway half, half an inch. Okay. Will be gone. Okay, so just don't so, have to. Cut as he said today, much. should be minimal deformity. That's what the doctor said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that it wasn't worse than it, yeah. than it was. So that we can all be thankful for that. Anything else that you wanted to no. add? No. no okay. But I, I didn't know. I sure didn't know that uh, it was something you weren't supposed to be doing. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lesson learned, huh? Right. Well, I mean, you know, uh, it, technically not supposed to be doing. Yeah. It's right. things that are done on job sites every day. But right. Right. Know, Bob Vila's not going to do it on a TV show. What I was doing. So right. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, it's not it's not fast to right. do it the right OSHA, way. OSHA would not approve of what yeah. I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, like we said, we're, we're glad that you're all right, and uh, we'll move on to Justin's jokes here. Uh, he gave us one this time, so you may be thankful for that, or you may be I disappointed, am. but uh, <laughs> nonetheless, he gave us one. And uh, today's was, hey, I started a band called 999 Megabytes. But we still haven't got a gig. So, you can groan. Is that the joke? That's the joke. Woo. Yeah, I know. Now, Stephen told us that he had one, so he might can save this. Well, you, you want a corny joke or you want one that actually brings a laugh? Uh, I'm gonna we go need with, a I'm laugh. Gonna, I'm going to go with corny. I'm okay, go okay. Corny. All right. go corny. And this is relevant. Okay. Because right? okay. it's... it's, it's uh, about current events. So this woman, uh, she saw a guy wandering around in her backyard and and called the police and said, there's a peeping Tom in my backyard. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the police said, how do you know he's a peeping Tom? She said, because I asked him what he was doing back there. And he said, I'm trying to catch a Pikachu. Oh, oh, oh. dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's still better. It, was, it was still better than this one, but... So, Justin, mm-hmm. you might need to up your game a little bit because Steven says he's got a lot of jokes, too. Yeah, yeah, we may have to have a, a competition each week. Uh, there's some talk about that. So, Justin, bring your A game. We got the preacher here bringing jokes. <laughs> uh, and you even brought a joke in the pulpit about your finger the first Yeah, first that time. was funny. That, yeah. that was very funny. He, go ahead, you can say Well, that. I just, I, I, my, my wife actually did. I mean, I said she, she said these things, but she did was making light of the situation. She said, there's a lot of sermon topics you could use right now, and this happened to my right hand. So she said, you could preach about what every joint supplies, uh-huh. <laughs> or if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and really, there's several other directions you could go there. So. Well, I don't, I don't think this was intended, but during that same lesson, you said something about either couldn't or could put a finger on it. Oh. And I don't think you meant, it, it went with the sentence that you said, but it got a chuckle out of me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I was hoping that other people caught it, but I don't oh, think yeah. most people did until, but anyway, until I've told them. Well, all right. Well, we will uh, move on to the reaction to our first episode. And uh, I guess I would set it up by saying that you invited my family over, Mr. Steven, to uh, your home for a lunch on a Sunday afternoon, us and some other families. And the whole time I was there, I kept debating whether or not to tell you the story I told on the podcast. And my mom wanted me to tell it. But, you know, there's other people there. And if I just start telling the story, and it's kind of a lengthy story because there's a lot there's a lot to it. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on me. And uh, I was like, I, I just don't know. Maybe he won't think it's funny. Maybe the people in the room won't think so. So, you know, just all these uh, insecurities start coming out. So I didn't I didn't say it, and I decided to uh, tell it on the podcast. Not expecting you to listen to the podcast, to be honest. <laughs> Not nobody else does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I thought that you would probably see it just on Facebook as we published it and that kind of stuff. But um, I didn't actually think you would give the time of day. Because <laughs> most people don't. So, you know, I, I just... I, he won't listen to it. If I don't give what it's about, why would he listen to it, you know? But nonetheless, the uh, 
the day after we posted it on my Facebook, you commented that was entertaining. And if I recall, there was no punctuation, so it was just that was entertaining. I think and, you put an ellipsis. Yeah, I put an ellipsis. Okay. That I, was Paul's <laughs> entertaining. Okay. All right. Well, I did not know how to respond to that. I, I laughed when I first read it. I was like, wow, he actually listened to it. He didn't, like, there's no ill effects thus far. And uh, <laughs> yeah. he seems to think it was entertaining. That's better than interesting. If you had said yeah. that was interesting, I would have been alarmed. I, I, my, <laughs> I would not have been working very productively at the moment. And then I get a text from Garrett. He's like, dude, Stephen commented or something. Like, Did you see Stephen's comment? And I said, yeah. And I said something like, I thought it was it was funny or whatever. He was like, you think he's mad? And I was like, <laughs> That's I was like, no. And should I think he's mad? And now I'm thinking, did I, did I not read it right? And so I go back and read it. It says what I think it says. And I'm like, why, did he, why do you think he's mad? And he, he's like, I don't know. I just think he might be mad about it. And so I'm like, well, I was really I was really messing with you more than anything, but I did think there was a chance that he might have been mad. Like, I didn't think he was, but I was just getting under your skin. Well, you, it worked, because then I was like, should I text him? And he was like, yeah. And so I, I, I text you, and uh, uh, I'm like, I'm glad you thought the the episode was entertaining. In uh, so many words, are you mad? <laughs> and uh, and you you didn't indicate that you were. And I sent Garrett the message that you sent me, and he was like, "Dude, he is mad." <laughs> so I'm like, no, he's not. And uh, I don't even know what I texted back. I don't remember either, but it just something about yeah, it was entertaining. Or yeah, something you said like you'd that. be glad to come on anytime or something. Right. So we took advantage of that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but so now I'm alarmed. I'm like, Garrett, why do you think he's mad at church the next day? He's still saying that. He's still saying, dude, he's mad. and then, <laughs> Because it was noticeably bothering you. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it was. But I did, anyway, so I, I didn't think you were mad. So are you mad? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm no. glad that you're not. Um, there, <laughs> did you even notice the, uh, the things happening to the same person? Like, did you pay attention that Jeremy oh. keeps making a fool of himself? No, no. You, you know... Um, just like he said, you know, getting under your skin there. You're putting way more thought into this than anybody else is. Of course, of course I am. <laughs> Which is okay. what I was thinking the whole episode is, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's really dwelling on this. Well, I more so dwelled on it because it, it was funny. Yeah. The whole time. Sure. So some of that was play up for the podcast. Sure. It didn't keep me up at night. Yeah, but. well, that's good. Um, you know, um, well, I'll just say a couple of things as far as reaction. First of all, um, you know, I was really impressed with the podcast. And, um, well, thank you. Um, it's hard to keep a dialogue going. We've noticed. You know, if yeah. you, uh, Alec Baldwin had a show on Air America. Okay. And so he's, he's a well known actor. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, it was a liberal, it was an attempt, Air America was an attempt to have liberal talk shows, radio shows like, like Rush Limbaugh and, okay. and Sean right. Hannity and so, so forth. So Alec Baldwin was one of those. He failed miserably. He couldn't keep a, a dialogue going. Oh. Now that's a professional actor. Right. They can't do that. But y'all really did a good job of keeping a dialogue going. Uh, not a lot of dead space. Not, I've heard you've had some dead space or maybe awkwardness on some of the other episodes. I don't know. But, um, right. but the happens. first one was, was pretty great. I mean, as, as a maiden voyage there, so... That was pretty okay. impressive, uh, especially without a script and so forth. Right. But, um, no, I mean, I was thinking the whole time. First of all, you know, man, people, I don't think of myself as intimidating. Right. My okay. wife thought it was <laughs> hilarious. You know, why do people think you are intimidating? <laughs> I said something to Kevin Moore about it, and he said, he said, well, I think of you as a four-year-old, so I, I obviously don't <laughs> think of you as, as intimidating. I can see him that, I can too. see that, too. <laughs> so... So um, you know, I mean, when when you hear that somebody has thought of you as intimidating, it's it's um, you know, it's victory, really. Yeah, you know? right, right. You of know, course so, it is. Yeah. So, no. So um, I did think about commenting instead of that was entertaining. Something like you're you're not the fourth most hated person. Yeah, right, 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 right. You're like seventh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? A little that would have been good. That would have been good. <laughs> but then you, you might, have, you know, really. I don't know. Taking that, I would have gotten a joke. <laughs> so no, it was it was really fun to listen to and and just you know thinking through it. I mean, I don't remember ha- half the things that you bring yeah, up. I didn't you know. figure you probably would. Um, I do remember this. All right, so you know when I came into Chick Fil A, 
And right. so here, here's the situation. And I'll just go ahead and fess up right here. I really am the one that messed up. I was ordering these on the day we needed them. Right. right. Well, I so that's, that. that's a, um, that's a mess up on my part. And, and it was because obviously halfway through the quarter we were changing subjects and I didn't realize that was the cutoff point. It wasn't real clear where we were cutting gotcha. off. And so, gotcha. oops, you know, that's the day. So anyway, um, so I said that, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't order them and, um, and so, obviously, that's why my reaction was what it was. Right, right. When you said you didn't have it, I'm like, oh, you know. Right. My first thought was, do you have a key? Can we get in? You right. Know, can we just go get them right now? You know. So, it wasn't to save you embarrassment. It was to save me embarrassment that I was really concerned. Right. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I will tell you, when we got to church um, and uh, I didn't have the books, I just said, the books are not in yet. And that's all I said. Just left it at that. They're just not in. Well, they and, weren't. And somebody said, somebody then took that and said, well, he ordered the books, but they just didn't get here. And I was like, fair enough. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's still just, true. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. You know? So uh, so it was really my fault. But um, but no, I didn't want you, I mean, I, I didn't want you to feel bad at all, obviously, right. Uh, right. for that. Maybe lose some sleep, but yeah. nothing more than that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other stuff, you know, <laughs> half the stuff, I'm just like, you know, I mean, I really just, and obviously I crack wise. I mean, I just, I make right, jokes. Right, right. And so I made the joke about coming in and getting the books yeah, myself. Yeah. You know, I didn't think anything of that. Right. And, um, and then the, the thing at the register, you know, I mean, that's, you know, I, obviously I didn't even know I got a discount. So that was nice. Yeah, but right. he saved money there. So, I mean, if I you mean, had yeah. knocked up 10%. Right, right. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you go We'd up be the having a list. different That's conversation right, right now. Right. Right. No, so that was just a nice little surprise. And then, uh, and then, what was it? Oh, yeah. the Falling down the hill. Falling down the hill. Now, you know. Everybody loves a good fall. I mean, right, honestly. right. Of course, yeah. yeah. I've been well, falling since I was As long as nobody kid. gets hurt. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah. I, I mean, really. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, we we have a whole TV show, America's Funniest Videos. It's right, right. nothing but that. Right, right. I so, wish I had seen it. Yeah. <laughs> it was entertaining. It, it was pretty good. I, so was I would it, give myself Were that. you like, he said like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, well I mean, it's I like an immediate reaction. I mean, yeah. I don't, it doesn't help anything. Yeah. Right. But like you say that, you know, like when your kids are about to fall down, you go, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. You know. And so that's just what you do. Yeah. You just say, whoa. Like yeah. it's going to help. Yeah. But obviously it scars people. Right. Instead of helping them. But. Right. <laughs> Didn't scar. But yeah. yeah. And so I try to, you know, try to bring levity. You know, 8.5 or 9.5. 9.5. 9.5, yeah. Good. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> but, of course, I didn't really think that you even noticed some of the things. If I were to guess, I, like he probably didn't even notice these things. The only reason it was embarrassing and the only reason it's added into the story is it's just one thing after another. And that's what makes it funny. Right. As you tell a story. Sure. You know, so uh, the, the thing at the register, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just like I already show, I already showed that I I mess up at my job, and then like let me do it again, <laughs> and, and then, again, <laughs> and, and again, and now let me fall, fall down the hill before you, ta-da! You know, <laughs> there you go, <laughs> bravo. But um, like I said, I I wouldn't figure that you did. The reason it's uh, it was embarrassing more so to me than it would be otherwise if it was someone else is like I said, being a camper at camp. So you look at me as a kid as you should if I look down at someone else as a kid of course I'm not going to pay attention to the silly things they do but the kid of course thinks about the things that uh, they do in front of someone especially someone of authority as you were at the camp and that kind of thing uh, so anyway it just the embarrassment 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 just I, it was too funny not to share and people that I've shared it with I mean will roll about it and it's my pride and joy now. So. There you go. <laughs> now, just to clarify, we also mentioned in, in that episode, you're not going to try to stop me and never get married, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Man. No. I'm relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't figure you would because you said, well, you are doing the wedding, but, you know, he said it, so I'm, I'm a little paranoid. So. No, I, I did actually try to stop a wedding one time. And, really? Yeah. I think, oh, dear. I We're I, going I there. successful, but... Can, um, can we hear any details? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> this I mean, is this, too good not this, to share. Well, the... Young lady asked me to perform a wedding ceremony right. at some point in the future, and I just said, "All right." I said, "Well, let's let's get together and have some 
studies about this, and I, I did. I had no confidence in the situation, and okay. so somebody asked me about it. I said, "Are you going to do that wedding ceremony?" I said, "Well, unless I can stop it." Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and I think I did. You know, oh, really? they did not get married, <laughs> <laughs> and he he decided otherwise. But I I just he, he didn't seem like somebody was ready to get married, oh, okay. and uh, and I I tried to expose that in in some Bible studies together that he was not ready and. I think he agreed with me. Hmm. He wasn't ready. But I think you're ready. Well, at least you didn't say that to us. So. No. no. I'm glad about that. No. It, if anyone in this world is ready to get married, it's Garrett Horn. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's what I've learned being <laughs> around him. So. But, all right. Well, uh, we really appreciate that uh, you joined us today and uh, giving us that feedback. I kind of wish that we should have we should have just had him on the episode the first time. Yeah, yeah but you were scared. Just admit it. I was scared. <laughs> I was terrified. But, well, really, because I didn't know how you would take it. Yeah. Just some like the fact that I called you intimidating. I'm just, probably Man, I could have had a lot of fun with that. I, I know just, you could. I could have just sat here and steamed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just Look daggers at you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's our show. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it, no, it, I wish that you had been there just so we could have gotten the authentic reaction. I think it would have been funnier, even more so. But it's it's definitely got the most listens of yeah. any of our episodes, and it just every week it seems to go up a little bit more. So. Congratulations, no, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well. What an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll move on to uh, the questions we got from our listeners. If you don't follow us uh, on Twitter or like us on Facebook, please go ahead and do that. You know, it really helps us out. We really appreciate it. And we like uh, interacting with you guys on there. And uh, this week we actually have more than one question. Gable did give us a question, and we always thank him for that. Uh, you're the man, Gable, but we actually got two more so uh, <laughs> we're moving up in the world <laughs> that's right uh but uh gable we'll start with gables uh what's the worst injury each of you have had to experience and obviously your finger thing may be top unless three, you have Mr. another Super. crazy injury maybe the uh the nail going through three? yeah i don't know the nail going through three fingers that was pretty close um but all my fingers were still there right. Right. in totality after and that. It, did it break any of them? No, it, it rubbed right up next to the bone. Oh, how convenient. Lovely. Um, yeah. I, I, I did Accurate. pass out, and they had to get the janitor to help them get the <gasps> nail out um, because they didn't have, they had to cut the nail, and the surgeon didn't have tools, you know, appropriate for cutting a, a 16 penny nail. And so they had to get a janitor to bring a pair of, uh, uh, of, of his, you know, pliers in right. to cut the nail and then they had to like pull one finger off and then cut it Ooh. some more and pull the next finger off and cut it some more. It's what's called a ring shank nail, which mm-hmm. means it has rings down the shank to hold oh, it in place. Gotcha. And it was holding it in place. Yeah. Right Dennis next job. to the bones. Were you uh were you awake for the parts when they took oh, the yeah, nail I was, out? Oh yeah, I was watching them. Yeah. <laughs> were really? they had they had they had uh, dead in my fingers. Okay, I was that was the my knuckles, next question. So I couldn't feel it. It's kind of weird watching somebody, you know, operate on you and you can't feel it. I don't think I'd have watched that. Yeah. You would have passed out every time. Yeah. <laughs> Garrett does not like needles yeah, at uh, all. You know, I, I can deal with the, the needles and all. Uh, the, the only reason I passed out, I mean, the pain, it just, it, yeah. it gets to you to right. a point where there's not much you can do. Yeah. Right. Uh, in, uh, in anatomy, just my, my college courses and stuff, I've never been one to really pass out or any that kind of thing when I see something gruesome or gory. I just like, that's disgusting. I don't want to watch it. But I've never noticed myself having any symptoms or anything from it. And I don't know, in anatomy too, this, uh, in the spring semester, my professor was showing some gory stuff, uh, trying to make a point about vaccines. We can get political, but anyway, she was trying to make a point about it. And I got lightheaded, and I got this pit in my stomach and stuff. It felt terrible. And now ever since, when I've, seen people nasty injuries and that kind of stuff every time so, so and i'm entering worst, the medical, med, medical field so what's your worst injury uh so i've had a, multiple injuries um but the worst one was probably when i broke my ribs but in order but also i broke my wrist so those are pretty close um i was returning the the wrist injury i was returning from uh an ankle injury, a severe ankle injury in basketball season. And I went up on a fast break elevator at the rim and a, a much bigger dude behind me just shoved me to foul me on purpose. But I'm skinny and light and I flew <laughs> into the wall and to brace myself from hitting my body or my shoulder or my head or whatever, I put my arm out and 
arm gave and uh, my wrist cracked. Uh, so that that was pretty terrible. They called a technical on you. Oh no, no, there wasn't a what? flagrant. There wasn't nothing. It, it was just a regular foul, and I was like, "Wow!" And uh, I told the dude at the end of the season that he broke my wrist doing that. I found him at a game. I was like, "You broke my wrist when you shoved me." He was like, "Yeah, man, I'm sorry about that." I was like, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> that made up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, buddy. No, but uh, that and then an all, another basketball injury was uh, I was driving to the hoop uh, in a playoff game and I elevated and. A guy elevated with me, but didn't get high enough or something, and he was trying not to foul, and so he brought his arms down, and his elbow, the point of his elbow, went right in my rib cage and cracked too. And that's the worst one because I feel that to this day. Like just when the weather will change or something, I'll feel this sharp pain in my left side. So that'd be my worst. What about you, buddy? All right, knock on wood, but I haven't had like a horrible, horrible injury. Uh, but when I was about 11 years old. I was uh, we were playing football at my grandparents' house and just in the backyard and you know the my my grandmother had um, you know the inside of a dryer uh, like what it looks yeah. like she had actually put fl- like decorated with flowers or something in her backyard it was an interesting looking thing but right. <laughs> anyway I uh, I was trying to catch the ball and I went over it and my leg caught the end of it and it gave me. A, a scar that where you could see my bone, like it, it oh, wow. kind of like cut underneath where uh-huh. you could see up in my bitch. bone. Yeah, and so I had to get some. I, that's the only time I've ever seen my bone. It was kind of cool. Right. Think about that. Yeah, it's seven staples. Seven staples. So it wasn't like a horrible injury, but it did hurt. That's pretty bad. And then it wasn't. This wasn't horrible either. But when I was eight, I was play, I played flag football just um, for the city, whatever. Right. Right. And uh, in practice one time, uh, I caught a pass, and I turned around, and I just, me and another guy just head-on collide. Ooh. And uh, blood flies everywhere. My, my nose, I bloodied up my nose. But I will say that I'm proud to say that I got the first down. I, did, I didn't stop running. I, I was running with my eyes closed, but I didn't stop running. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the little hair so, doing that. That's so uh, I was determined. But, yeah, I haven't had a horrible injury, thankful to say. That's good. So, uh Way to go, buddy. Try to keep it that way. Yeah. Oh, and I did, um, about three years ago, working with Mr. Westbrook, one of our elders at church, uh, I was working on a house with him, and I uh, had some wood go through my ankle. I had to get, uh, Corbin's dad had to give me some stitches for that <laughs> on their kitchen table. That a boy. So, Thank nice. you, Mr. Corbin's dad. <laughs> so, uh, I have a unique injury. You oh, see, yeah? You see this little scar right here? Okay. Okay. It's on his forearm. Yeah. Um, I was stabbed with a toilet. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was taking a toilet out of a demo and on, on a demo job, and it cracked, uh-huh. and, it, and it jabbed me right there. <laughs> I mean, pretty severely, you know, yeah. enough that it left a scar. And so, you know, my girls were looking at it one day. What happened right there? Well, I stabbed myself with a toilet. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, that's a great line. Yeah. Yeah. I was stabbed with a toilet. That's great. All right, why, why don't you read the next one there, Garrett? From at Macy Elizabeth on Twitter, she says, Since school is starting up soon for most people, what are good snack items to pack in a lunch? I would say um, I love fruit snacks, like the gummies, that kind of thing. They're, they don't fill you up at all, so that's a downside. They're just empty sugar, but they taste really good, so I like those. Like fruit snack, honey buns, Swiss Ooh, cake honey rolls. Buns. Granola bars. I mean, it's hard to decide. I guess I go for really sweet, so I think Swiss cake rolls are the best, right. even though they're completely unhealthy. Right. But um, it's hard to beat zebra, zebra cakes. Yep. Zebra cakes. See, I mean, it's Little hard to narrow it down. I, d- I didn't go to school, you know, so my snack was whatever was in the pantry that day or the fridge. So what about you, Mr. Steven? What, did you have a go-to snack growing mm. up? I don't know if I had a, a go-to snack. i tell you what I did. I, I, I used to take snacks and sell them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. And so I would, I would like, go to Sam's with my mom, and then, and then I would buy, like, a large quantity, and I'd have some for myself, but then I would sell them, like, right. 50 cents or a quarter a piece. Uh-huh. Until one of the teachers said, what are you selling that for? And I said, um, to make money. <laughs> and he was like, for what? And I was like, for me? Yeah. And he said, nah, if you're not selling that for some, you know, Aww. for cheerleading or football, you got to stop that. So he shut my enterprises right down. Mm. Mm. But, um, but I, I just, any kind of, 
you know, sweets mostly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Now, getting older, you know, you, you, you look for protein. You look right, for, right. you know, all these sensible things. But right. in school, it's just about sweet. That's yeah. right. Keep the sugar to keep you going. Right. <laughs> Even as a kid, though, I would have been completely happy to open up a lunchbox and just see fruit. Just plain fruit. I love fruit. It's, I, I like it better than sweets normally, so I'd rather have That's fruit. That's a good thing. Yeah, well, well, helps me keep my figure. I like bananas a lot. Really? Yeah, bananas in fact, at work fruit. last year, we get free bananas. Oh. and uh, But they're mainly for the people out in the mill because it's hot and a good source mm-hmm. of something. I don't know, but potassium. it's good for them, potassium. Um, but uh, I was going to get in... Like, they knew I loved them. And so my boss jokingly said, Garrett. And it, I didn't notice that she was kidding at first. She's like, Garrett, you only get one banana a day. We're going to have to put a limit on you. <laughs> <laughs> but she was completely kidding. But... Right, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, we got a question also from uh, Katie Sexton, who helps us out with the show from time to time. Uh, big part of the, uh, the jingle. So quick shout out to her. But uh, she gave us... A question today uh favorite ice cream flavor and I, i'll i'll go ahead and start mine is rainbow sherbet i love sherbet i just like fruit stuff so i guess i made that mint clear. chocolate chip really oh I love i'm disappointed it. there's nothing it. better you get the chocolate and the, the refreshing mint i can think about almost everything it. that's better oh. than that i hate <laughs> mint chocolate <laughs> i'm sorry that you have bad taste <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry too what about you, Mr. Steven? Oh, man, I, I'd have a hard time narrowing it down. Um, I, I like uh, uh, butter pecan mm, a okay. lot. Okay. But I like most chocolate things as well. Uh-huh. So my, my favorite would probably be any, I, I want an ice cream with, with uh, nuts in it. Okay. And maybe chocolate as well. Some Maybe turtle tracks or moose tracks okay. or something like that. It's really good. But, and I'm just an ice cream fan. What about mint chocolate chip? I'd eat mint chocolate chip. All right. I wouldn't love it, but I would eat it. I'm going to put you on the spot here. I heard this past week um, that there was a ice cream run at a camp that you were a part of that preachers went on. I don't know if you heard about this, but I was told that preachers, as as a rule, are huge fans of ice cream. So this is this is what I hear. And then they have decided kind of as as a group that the best ice cream is uh, Bluebell. News to me as well. So have you heard any of this before? And no. Haven't heard this any of this. This is news to me. And you didn't know they went on ice cream run? Really? No. Okay, well, I heard that uh, while I was at work, work at a Christian bookstore, so there's a lot of ties to congregations all over the place, and a daughter of one of the preachers said uh, that they while while they were at camp, they got to talking about ice cream as they often do, and uh, there was mention of a new bluebell, bluebell flavor. Uh, that's like uh, cookies and cream and cookie dough mixed together. It's this new thing that they have out. I'm I'd for actually, it. Yeah, <laughs> I've actually heard of this, but they th- it came up in conversation, and they decided at midnight that they were going to go into town and get this ice cream so <laughs> wow that's a pretty good drive to town from, yeah, it, from the camp it, it is it that's, is that's a dedication right yeah there. <laughs> well it's ice cream no too. see i i stay um at that camp I, I stay uh by the kitchen right while the men that you're speaking of stay in uh very luxurious accommodations across the lake ah uh, so um see. also i get up early in the morning to cook breakfast for everybody uh-huh. so, uh-huh. so no midnight you? runs for cat for no ice cream for me no Mm, they didn't no. share. But I'll tell you what, Publix ice cream. Mm. Yeah. I'm all about some Publix brand ice cream. Publix Publix brand pretty much anything. Yeah. They, they know what they're doing up yeah. there. I'm really impressed with that. I like Publix. Just it goes on sale a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's also more expensive to start with. A lot. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how they that's how they balance yeah. that out. Well, uh, again, we really appreciate you joining us. That about concludes our show. Uh, and uh, we want to thank you, the listener, for joining us as well. We got a couple shout outs, and I think Garrett's going to give those uh, to start with. Uh, already gave Katie hers, uh, but we really appreciate the work that she does for us. Yeah, we're thankful to Katie, and then also, obviously, for Kevin. Uh, he helped us record the song, and uh, thankful, I guess, for uh, Justin's joke. If we have to be. If we have to be thankful for it. Uh, obviously, Caleb and Corbin, you don't hear their voices, but they're sitting right here, as always, and they spend a lot of time editing this because we need a lot of editing. We do. We uh, do. So, uh, 
We also also obviously want to thank Stephen for uh, stopping by. He was uh, really awesome. So uh, thank you for joining us today. We did go a little long today, but we had a preacher with us, so you can't really blame us for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, preacher joke. So uh, keep listening and stay upside up.